The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 35 to chapter 10, verse 23. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. In our reading today of Matthew's Gospel, we get an important glimpse into the loving motivation of Jesus. The second verse we read is, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus, in our Gospel, felt compassion. He felt compassion for the people's physical needs and also for their spiritual needs. Now, our world today is also harassed and helpless in ways. Most are harassed by our modern society, unavoidable and constant drumbeat of consumerism and the pursuit of stuff. Others are harassed by earthly systems that marginalize them and subject them to a nearly inescapable maze of poverty. Think about this. We call it the cost of living, but it truly does cost us money just to be alive each and every day. We are all helpless to get off that treadmill of consumerism until we die. In our reading today, when Jesus sees the crowds of people from all stations of life gathering, he knows they've come to hear his message of hope and good news. And he understands their predicament and senses how overwhelming the need for them is. Filled with compassion for them, Jesus knows that even if he, that he, even he needs help sharing the good news. So verses 37 and 38 say that Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so in our reading, he then begins to prepare and equip the disciples to be those additional laborers. Well, our society today approaches work as paid employment for our labor. We've all been encouraged and taught the value of being a hard worker. But the overwhelming majority of the time, that hard work, for that hard work, the reward is wealth or personal gain. And rarely, does it appeal to a person's sense of compassion? There are a few people today out there holding up that banner of compassion. And those who try are often drowned out by the voices of earthly powers that would rather we buy our way to the solution. A good example of this is our world's leading so-called solutions to the growing climate crisis, which are carbon taxes, which allow polluters to keep polluting, but pay a fee as a carbon tax or buy an offset. Even on the world stage at our last gathering of the nations to combat the issue of climate change, the only real step agreed to was the creation of a fund that polluting nations would put money into, that the poorer countries could use to pay for damages caused by the rising temperatures and rising ocean levels. So our world's best solution so far to this life-threatening problem seems to be to buy our way out of actually dealing with the roots of the problem. But here in our gospel, Jesus calls us to be laborers as one who works towards the goal of caring for others and pointing them towards a loving relationship with God. It isn't about monetary reward. You cannot pay or buy the good news. In the words of sending that Jesus speaks to his disciples, he makes this work, he makes it clear that this work is not at all like earthly employment. He says in chapter 10, verse 8, you receive without payment, give without payment. So proclaiming the good news is not about money. In our reading today, Jesus' example of compassion illustrates clearly that God's motivation is rooted in love and not profit. And so following in Jesus' footsteps as a disciple and follower, 
we are being encouraged to be motivated in our lives to increasing our compassion for others, not encouraged by the pursuit of personal or corporate profit. God's grace is at work through us when we are motivated from compassion and generosity as we strive to restoring all people into right relationship with God and with each other. I'd now like to invite us to join together in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need and those who have departed. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. You established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Chris, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we continue to pray for the parishes of the Kent Deanery, for their clergy and people. Enliven us by your spirit and speak and act in love for the sake of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for those affected by the wildfires burning in numerous provinces in our country. Have mercy on land, the lands that have been damaged by fires and those that are in the path of the fires. Protect those who have had to evacuate their homes and strengthen those who will need to rebuild their communities and lives. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. Guide us continually toward the end of impression in all its forms. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, hungry, or ill. Bring peace to any experiencing distress or illness, that they can clearly recognize your loving presence in their lives. In our own parish this week, we pray especially for Eric, Denise, Edith, for Helen, along with the Story, Sibylla, and Jackson families, for Betty, Lena, Doreen, Elaine, Karen, Enid, Brian, Barb, Alex, Vicky, Evelyn, Eva, Miriam, Max, and Annette and Mary Rose. We also pray for those who are in our parish experiencing continuing long-term health concerns, praying for Norma, Charlotte, Roy Ann, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Florence, Joyce, Charlene, Brandy, and Bud. Help us to trust your promise and not to be afraid. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for St. Mark's. We ask that you continue to bless the ministries of this parish. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need and to reach out to the community where we are able to do and help. Bless us with the desire and compassion to do more for the world around us and for one another, that those in need are seen by the church and are given a helping hand. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Bless our fathers and our father figures with love and faithfulness and help them as they nurture mutual love and tender care in their relationships. Bring comfort to those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We lift our prayers to you, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Almighty God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.